Hi, friends. I'm, I'm really excited this morning to be with everyone. Last night, you guys heard from Jay talking about uh, our values and what it means that we are Vineyard. Uh, and we're at an interesting crossroads right now. And uh, I'm really excited about not only our history and what we've come through, but what the next leg of the journey looks like. And we have the privilege this morning of talking for a little bit. If you don't know this young lady to my right, Carol Wimber uh, is uh, the way that I've always termed it, the, the mother of our movement. She I'm might, 84. Yeah, I know. You're 80, well, the, the, the I'm not a young lady. Movement, but we, I this just, old lady. Be a... I, I just call them like I see them, Carol. Okay, That's okay, all. Okay. I just call them like I, I see them. So, um, Carol, I, I have a couple just, you know, kind of simple questions for you this morning that I want everyone to, to hear your heart. during. So rather than interpreting you, I, I just want it, you know, from the horse's mouth, if you will. Um, when when you go back to the very beginning, before there was the vineyard that we've all come to know, mm -hmm. when you and John were uh, just loving Jesus and learning what it meant to love Jesus, were you trying to start a whole movement of churches? Did you have a goal? Did you have an agenda before all this existed? No, no, it was a further, further thing from my mind. Um, we were led to the Lord by a very unique man who was a, a, he worked on oil wells and he was a welder and he had a house in Yorba Linda and he was teaching a Bible study. He, ha he had really severe disregard for the professionals. So, you Religious know. Religious professionals? The, 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 the pastors, the yes. priests, the ones that, and so we, we picked up some of that, not a dis, disdain, but just a sense of, we don't need them. I mean, we can go straight to God. And we didn't have anything against them, but it wasn't like, we knew that we, once we became Christian, the, the gunner style, lock, stock, and barrel, no holes, barred kind of Christian, uh, we knew that we were inhabited by the Holy Spirit. And he was our boss. He was the one that, above us. Yes. And, and uh, so, I mean, you know, we would scoot around whoever the pastor was. But, I mean, he was a nice man. We we're happy. But what I mean is it wasn't our pastor. Gunner was our pastor yeah. until he had to leave uh, uh, because of uh, his son was in a terrible accident. Mm -hmm. And uh, so much so that, and his daughter had been murdered here in Yorba Linda. A couple of years before, I had no idea. yeah, a, a Billy Rupp, hmm. and it was a it was a very famous case, and uh, Gunner, the whole all of Yard Belinda was very small then, and you know, Orange Grove, they everybody was looking for this young man, who had killed her. Oh my gosh! And uh, Gunner was also looking, and he found him, and he said, "I'm glad." I'm glad I found him because anybody else, they would have killed him right oh there. It was gosh, such a terrible girl, thing. I had no idea. So, and he visited him in prison every, every month. He'd go up and talk to him in prison and eventually led him to the Lord. Mm. Wow. wow. And so, I mean, he was, he was executed. I don't know, electric oh, chair or whatever, yeah. but, but he knew the Lord. Mm. So, you know, so we, that was a man we would listen to, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and ev like the Lord was everything to him yeah. and he worked a day job, yeah. you know, like John worked a day job yeah. and, uh, but you know, his heart was the Lord's yeah. and he was all, everywhere he went, you know, he, there were, cr Christians were born, yeah. you know, and uh, it had nothing to do with who happened to be the pastor or the board or anything else. Right. So we were kind of bor born through that line, mm -hmm. although we respected the pastors and hoped that the teaching one was a good teacher, but yeah. we did not look at them like uh, in charge of us. Yeah. You know, we, we knew by then the Holy Spirit was in charge of us and that's who we listened to. Mm. Although we we're grateful for people around us yeah. that were kind to us. And, so, and they were such a kind group of people yeah. until, until, you know, there was an 
uh, outpouring of the Holy Spirit. John was praying because Gunnar was leaving and he didn't know who's going to take over all these Bible studies that John started. And, I, and you know, how's it going to happen when Gunnar's leaving? And then all of a sudden he said, he said, a funny thing happened, Carol. I was up there praying and all of a sudden I couldn't understand myself. John couldn't understand himself? Himself, yeah. Yeah, just started. Because we didn't know anything about really. Speaking they in didn't tongues. Have, no, or, no. Yeah. I mean, all we knew was a bad thing. There had been a church split a couple of years before. And um, so uh, so we said we better call up, press, uh, I mean, the pastor at the time, mm. the Quaker pastor, and uh, have him. You know, ask him some. So he came over, came right over. Yeah. <laughs> and John told him what had happened. And he said, oh, John, he said, uh, the, those uh, tongue speaking people, that it's uh, caused church, you know, split to church. It's so divisive. He said, it's just, it's just so sad because the church, of course, is growing. Mm -hmm. And uh, with all these musicians that were, that were now, uh, now Christians, though not very disciplined. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> uh, so anyhow, so they John just decided you guys to put the kibosh on it. They wanted yeah, John to stop. Yeah, and so, and I, you know, I was kind of scared. I don't want to get kicked out of this church. With all these people that love us, and um, so um, I think with that and with our pastor being so brokenhearted and me being kind of frightened, John just said, well, you know, there's just something to happen. I don't, you know, whatever. So he didn't even, he didn't even really realize what had happened. Right. Um, but nevertheless, you know, uh, and the church started to grow because John really was anointed from the beginning. And, 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 and he took the Bible like it was absolutely a book God wrote. He, you know, he took it all correct. Yeah. Like, like, why would he write a book if it wasn't correct? Right, 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 <laughs> exactly. So New Testament, Old Testament. I mean, he took it all literally. So yeah. you, you and, guys, you guys found yourself, Carol, after you left the the Quaker Church. Okay. And there was a whole dynamic to that. There was a bunch of moving pieces, but all of a sudden, you guys found yourself meeting in a living room. Right. Gathered right, together, right, right. going after God the best you knew how in those early days in what would become the vineyard that we're all aware of, the vineyard that we all know now. In those very earliest days, what was it that you think God was doing amongst you guys? What, what was the, the genesis of all this? What was God doing with those folks in that living room as you were going hard for Jesus? Well, he was equipping us. He was, you know, it was basically we were studying the Bible. We were praying yeah. for needs, yeah. pray for one another. And it was, you know, just a bunch of people. There wasn't any leader. Bob and Penny were there and they helped start it after John had talked about home groups. But John wasn't there. John was working up at Fuller and with Peter Wagner and all this stuff going on, you know, these Healy's and stuff. And, um, um, so Bob and Penny got it going, and I would normally have gone, but I couldn't go anywhere because, oh, oh, I didn't tell you about being jumped in the night. Uh, oh, goodness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, I'm thinking, why, Lord? Like, John's not here now, and the church is diminishing. Like, we should not be so dependent on one man. Like, what's wrong with him? Why, you know, why? Uh, and, and then I fell asleep, and then I woke up. Woke myself up, like speaking in tongues real loud. And uh, I woke John up. I said, did you hear that? <laughs> he said, what? No. <laughs> I said, I was speaking in tongues. <laughs> and did that scare you? No, but I realized how wrong I had been. Mm. You know, when uh, helped uh, the, the pastor, the yearly meeting guy, shut down John's experience. Yeah. Uh, so I was, I went into deep repentance. That's what happened to me. Mm. And I realized this. And look what was supposed to be seven years. I said, and it was supposed to happen. And what didn't happen because of my fear. And, uh, and I just, it broke my heart. I couldn't quit crying. I had to wear sunglasses anywhere I went because the, the tears, you know, or people say, oh, did you hurt yourself? You know? yeah. <laughs> so it was a weird time. And uh, I think your dad told you we were. I was having kind of a nervous breakdown, but and I 
couldn't hang out with my friends because I couldn't hide it. Yeah. But so finally, uh, somebody asked me, Carol, do you speak in tongues? You know, like, <laughs> like, are you part? Are you a Satan? Right, right, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I said, yes, I do. Mm. And uh, and they all like closed their notebooks and said, well, well, uh, Judy Bell, I was funny. <laughs> said, well, I I'm sorry, but I can't teach with you. Yeah. And I said, I am totally understand, yeah. <laughs> but kind of have your homework. <laughs> yeah. So you, you, so, and, you so and then you. we were, you know, we were out. John didn't. John yes. was at Fuller. I knew then when I went to the group, like this is the church. This is the nucleus of what's going to happen right here in the Wickwire's living room. So, but I had to keep my mouth shut because, you know, so mouthy before, and uh, look what happened. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, I, deep repentance, and then finally, they just kind of caught it. All the all these women teachers, and uh, you know, you know, they kind of approached me privately, and they would say, "Carol, you know, what happened to you? You know, do you speak in tongues?" I said, "Yes," and they said, "Oh." So then they go home, and then they and somehow that opened the door for them. They all got filled with the spirit and were speaking in tongues. So there were about eight, nine, ten women. And uh, and now always all these women teaching the younger women in the, in the Quaker Church where we don't believe that <laughs> where the, you know the hierarchy does not believe in that and it's all happened and I think at one point they they were like had it hooked up so they could hear it during ministering council at the board like what we were teaching you there <laughs> wow. Wow. but it was good stuff it was just holy spirit stuff and jesus stuff yeah. and and massive amount of people were getting saved yes. women and then finally um uh john started coming to the groups a group and um he was pretty busy so he didn't come all the time but i think uh i think eventually we realized that this is a nuclear. We didn't push anything. Right. We wanted to wait to see what God was going to do. So what you're describing, Carol, if I understand you correctly, is you guys were happy at, oh, the, yeah. at the Quaker Church. You oh, were we loved. They loved us. Yeah, you were cranking along. You know, oh, following yeah. Jesus the best you knew yeah. how. And it sounds like God surprised you guys with what he was doing. He suddenly began to pour out on you in ways that you hadn't anticipated. Right. You suddenly- Didn't know anything about. Right, he started doing the same thing to other people around That's you. That's right. So when you started gathering in that living room together and John started coming along to kind of lead it- That was down at Wickwire's house. Wickwire's house, okay. So when that was first happening, what, what are some of the things that God was doing amongst you guys as you- came together well once john realized what was going on yeah. and he's realizing you know and he had a big experience with god where like he cried for a couple hours and he was getting old sick doing all that um uh, church girl stuff yeah and uh so he asked a lot of the leaders uh, of the kinship group leaders the house group leaders to come over here and so they come came over here to this, uh, to this house, house right here. here right here wow in this room um and so, and John was playing the piano over there and uh, uh, singing songs, you know, and uh, and uh, so they were getting filled with the Holy Spirit. Laura all of a sudden saw, like, he's like, something, somebody's teeth got healed right there in the room, room and that kind of, that's that started happening. And uh, uh, so what was happening, these are all the kinship home group leaders. So of course, it went to all the homes you know, with the leader, yeah. and everybody was filled with the Holy Spirit. I mean, they, somebody did a, uh, some company did a, um, a survey about how many people speak in tongues, mm -hmm. uh, in the denominations, really, and, and, uh, and, and they, and they said, um, the vineyard, I think it was a vineyard by then, like, do not, teach or do not talk about speaking in tongues or it is a part of the the theology but like 98 percent people speak in tongues mm. so it's very spreading right. you know and it it just you know you catch it like 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 a wonderful disease yeah, like a contagious wonderful disease. contagious 
I love it. Thing. Very love contagious. It. Well, nobody ever pressed. We didn't have a, a, a class on how to speak in tongues or how to heal the sick. But you, we did, the job description of the church was right out of the scriptures. We heal the sick. We raise the dead. We, uh, uh, we clothe the naked. We feed the hungry. We, whatever else is in there. Yeah. And that was, that was not the pastor's uh, job description, the Christian's job description. Right. So we, when we've talked before, I'll call something vineyard. I'll say, Carol, what you're describing is very vineyard. And you'll correct me. You'll say, Mike, what, you're dis what I'm describing is very Christian. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so when you guys were first gathering together and you're being surprised by, you know, the outpouring of the spirit of God, speaking in tongues and, and you're, and you're, you're going hard for Jesus. You weren't trying to start a movement. Absolutely the vineyard, not. Right. What were you, what were you trying to do? We were trying to spread the truth. I mean, we were just trying to be Christians. Yes. And and people people that were sick. We had people sick sick people, dying people, and they couldn't get well. And we felt like, you know, there was a lot going on. Like, Lord, people are coming here because they need healing. We don't we don't have any healing unless you give it to us. We don't have anything unless you give it to us. Like we need your Holy Spirit to do this. We don't have anything unless you. We're like the like the, the person uh, that um, had visitors and they didn't have any food, right. so they had to go next door to get food. Right. And and you know we'll go anywhere to get food, but but we got to feed these people that come because of your great name. It's not us. Yeah. It's you. So. <clears throat> That, so there was a desperation in our prayers at that time. You get, you're doing this. You're, you're causing all these people to come, and we don't have anything to give them unless you give it to us to give them. So he gave it to us. I mean, and, and that, was not, that wasn't because we were the leaders. That was because we were Christians. So everybody had that same impression. Nobody thought they, they needed to go through anybody else. They could go straight to God, but they, they had a realization of what the Holy Spirit wants to do. Much deeper than we had before. I mean, we love Jesus and everything, but uh, we didn't have any power. I mean, a lot of power. So we'd pray for each other, but, but not like it was a job description and not like this sickness was something we could speak to and tell it to get lost. And, and John used to make it real simple. He, he said, there's demons all over the place. You know, and when one comes in your house, you just kick it out like you would, what a stray cat. Right. You know. And that anybody could do that. Anybody, yeah. John didn't have to come no, over and do no, it. No, 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 yeah. no. That, that was, I mean, Gunner cured us of any of that, you know, uh, upfront worship. Yeah. You know, we, we, we tolerated whoever was pastors. Right. You know, just you know, if hoping they're nice to the people. Right. And hoping they didn't, you know. But, that, you know, it's strange that... That was that was a Quaker denomination, the French Church, and uh, years later, we were up in the northern part, which which had a different yearly meeting. Uh, there, this is California. That was Oregon yearly meeting, and the head of Oregon yearly meeting came to uh, John, and John was kind of sick then in the hotel room, and he's tired because he's just done a thing, and he knelt down before John and he said. You were Joseph, and we didn't recognize you. Mm, wow. I was very touching. How did he respond to that? Well, he got filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> but nevertheless, it was such a sweet thing. Yeah. I mean, because they had asked us to leave. They were sweet, and they prayed for us and gave us a gave us a, a, a document with the families written and say, we bless you for what to, uh uh, for what God's called you to do, and uh, you've been great be benefit to us, and uh, you know we love you, yeah. and we free you now to go do what God's called you wow. to do. So we have that yeah. somewhere in our archives, probably oh, wow. in the linen closet. I don't know <laughs> our archive, but anyhow, so those are sweet people. They raised us from when we were baby Christians, yeah. you know. So we'll always be fond of the yes. Friends Church, yes. and we were, we have a good relationship with them now. Mm. You know the young guys now that have all grown up, and they don't—they're not afraid of the of the things of the spirit. Right. Like Bob Fulton goes over and teaches, and uh, and and you know they 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 all say, 
If we'd been around then, we wouldn't have asked you to leave. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you this, Carol. Why were people attracted to John? Because John had no religion. What do you mean by that? I mean, he had never been. I used to think he was exaggerating. Because he had never been in a church. His grandmother grandmother was Jewish. She thought she didn't want him. I know she was Jewish because those were the years when people were prejudiced, mm -hmm. you know, after the Second World War and so. And uh, uh, and oh, I lost my. He was of, he was raised with no religion. He was raised with no religion, though a, 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 a Baptist young man had come by the house when uh, the grandmother wasn't there and talked to John's grandfather, Charlie, who was like his father. And Charlie was not Jewish, but he didn't have, you know, he wasn't a Christian either. And he gave Charlie a little Bible and, uh, and talked to Charlie's grandpa, John's grandpa, about Jesus. And apparently, uh, Charlie, his grandpa, became a Christian. This was just like his last month of his life. Oh, wow. And so all the whole family gathered together and John as maybe a, a, a 17 year old standing over in the corner of Charlie's room and uh, all the all the family, the uncles all around and uh, his his grandfather, Charlie, who's like been in a coma, all of a sudden sits up and says, glory. Glory, he's here. You see him, he's here. And then died. Oh and so John, like, taking that in, yeah. so he was very, very, like, that, that's what, you know, I think that's what opened him up and ready, ready when he heard the truth. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. When, when God um, started really moving amongst you guys, right, you're in, you're in a living room. You're starting to worship him, go hard after oh, him. Oh, yeah, all of us. We, yeah. we didn't have a leader. Oh, ex Exactly. Talk to me a little bit about that, because one of the things that you've talked to me the most about is, Mike, one of the things that was happening amongst us at the beginning is we realized we didn't have to go to the pastor or the professional for God to do something. It was all about... You could go directly to God. Go directly to Talk God. Talk to me a little bit about that. Well, I think Gunner, who wouldn't have believed in the gifts, some of the gifts, right. still, I bet that that was his attitude. There isn't anybody, you know, first church south of God yeah. or first person. Yeah. There isn't anybody between you and God. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and it's your responsibility to go to the Lord himself yes. and get your directions from him. Uh, shepherds are to take care of the flock and make sure, you know, they, the water holes are clean and, you know, brush them out and, they, and then the wolves don't come yes. and so on. But they're not a go-between. No. Anyone could no do the way. stuff. Anyone Every, could. We, were, we are a body. Yeah. You know, like, what is the body of the Christ? That's us. Yes. Uh, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have, like, the head. If there's a head, it, it serves in some man. Right. You is know? it some woman? <laughs> or some no. woman. <laughs> But, but what I mean is we just we weren't being rebellious because we had no concept yeah. of uh, somebody. We had no concept that we could believe that. Yes. that no, I, well, I, have raised, I was raised Catholic, so I knew, you know, the only person you tell your sins to is a priest. And yeah. that's the only way to get forgiven and, and all that. And, uh, you know, but I, I wasn't there very long right. uh, until I was a teenager. But nevertheless, I knew what it was to have to go through the steps. Yeah. Before, yeah. Uh, before you were acceptable and so on, right? Yeah, or worthy. So, but John had didn't didn't have the misfortune of being raised in a church, right? And any church, yeah. And so, so he, you know, I, I can so see it now as I get older. So he was not contaminated by any limitations mm. on what God would do and what he expected and what he would do through you. I love it. I know it. It's, 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 it just means like everybody, yeah, everybody gets to play. That's, yeah. that's what he means when he says everybody gets to play. Yeah, it's for And the meat is in the street. That means go out and do it. Find, you know, yes. find a homeless guy and pray for him. That's right. You know, and get him healed and raise him up, help him. And, and uh, it just meant like it, it's not in a building. 
It's in the street. It's yeah. people. And, and honestly, if you remember back in those early days when there was a big crowd, we couldn't stay, to the, stay with the home group situation because nobody wanted to leave John. You know, we tried, goodbye, goodbye, you know, start home. And no one <laughs> would they, leave they'd come what back. you guys were doing. Right. Yeah, they, they'd come back. So we thought, well, that's not working. And then the warehouse, um, uh, it was sold where we were meeting because we didn't really mean to spend money on buildings. We wanted to spend money on the poor and so on. Uh, but anyhow, we figured God was doing that. Uh, so, so in those, what you're describing in, in the days before you, uh, had been a part of this big movement that we now know as the vineyard, if you could name it, if you could identify, put a couple handles on it, when you were just in that living room together, what were the main things God was teaching you and John and the people around you. What was he doing? What did he want you to get? Well, that there's no hold apart. Yeah. Yeah. Like a person filled with the spirit of Jesus is supposed to be, a, we should be doing all the things that Jesus did. Yeah. His values should be our values. Yeah. And, and we didn't, we didn't, we, you know, we told each other things. We didn't feel like one, even one person in a home group wasn't the boss of the home group. Right. But, and so, I mean, so many people were healed just in a home group. I mean, mir miraculously healed. Yeah. And it didn't even have to be a big home group and they, they could take, uh, you know, take turns teaching or whatever. Yeah. But everybody did what they were good at. Good at. But I'm telling you, we got so, uh, <clears throat> I don't know what happens to the body, but we got so good at it. The, that I, you know, I could go, I could, I would feel wherever the bad spot was. Wow. When, when someone would like, we, it was time to pray for him. Um, you know, we would just keep our hands out here and, 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 then, and then suddenly you'd feel big heat coming from here. And then we knew it was in the shoulder. We dress, addressed it and uh, got healed. Wow. Wow. I mean, it was very, very simple. We yeah. didn't have any fancy things. We didn't use fancy words. Yeah. I heard one person say, get the hell out of here. <laughs> Talking to a demon. The demon left. Is that the prayer? Get the hell out of here? Yeah, yeah that's a good prayer. I like it. Well, he was talking like John should kick. I got a black cat, you know. Yeah. The, you know, the, just the walks in your house. And it's not his house. You just tell him, you know, kick him out. So it was kind of in that strain. Yes. But it was funny. And they thought, oh, I didn't mean to say Yeah, yeah. So everybody gets everybody, to play. Everybody had to get to play yeah, for crying was, out loud. You that know? was one of the big things at the very yes, beginning. Yes, and it grew like crazy. Because yeah. you, well, the person that prayed for my husband now, Ken Wong, uh, uh, Ken had had a, something very wrong with his shoulder that happened when he was in the ocean and all. And it hadn't healed right. And, he couldn't, and he'd been a swimmer, and now he couldn't raise his arm. So he was way up in the balcony there at the big building, and he has people all around him. <clears throat> and, and John had a word of knowledge and uh, about the shoulder and all that. And he, he, she said, he said, is there anybody that this matches? And Ken raised his hand. He said, okay, uh, you guys ride around and pray for him. Well, those, those guys weren't even Christian, but they prayed for him. Ken got healed, and then they became Christians. Yeah, amazing. See, God uses people that aren't even Christians yet. That's right. I yeah. mean, so, you know, he, you can see it. It's like... Uh, uh, it's a great plan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So everybody gets to play was a huge part of that. Everybody original. has to play. Everybody has to. You know, I, I like, I like the correction on that. Another, another big part of what seems to have been present from the very beginning in what we now know as the vineyard was a real intimacy in worship. Talk That's to right. me a little bit about that. What, what was, where did that come from? Well, that came, well, you know, John, a musician, and he wrote a lot of be beautiful worship songs, but he didn't, he didn't write them when he decided, I'm going to sit down. They came to him and he wrote it down. Yeah. And uh, uh, so he felt that uh, in the worship, he felt like some people are writing worship songs, you know, trying to, hoping there'll be a hit or something. And he'd had no interest in that kind of thing. But... Uh, he felt like God gives the song, God gives God gives the music, and 
and he, he gives, he said he does everything else for us. He pours his spirit out on us. He died for us, taking our sins away. Now what we give him is our worship. We worship him. Don't be worshiping for the sake of somebody next to you or for the sake of an audience. Worship him. Yeah. And, and he'll tell you how to do it. So do you know I will not give you a, a song lineup to sing to the group? You know, that belongs to him. Mm. You'll know. Wow. So, I mean, and Eddie, Eddie Espinosa is a perfect example. In what uh, way? And, and I mean, well, I, I, and like... I don't think Eddie was leading worship anything. He was a teacher, you know. And uh, John said, I want you to lead worship, you know. Yeah. So, you know, he ends up giving up his teaching. Yes. <laughs> I mean, on staff. <laughs> and, and, um, and, and leading worship. He said, we just, we just waited, you know, for his presence. And then when his presence was there, we would just start worshiping and it turned into a beautiful song. And yeah. There's some old tapes, you know, where, where it's just people singing in the spirit. For a long, long time, and then finally, it breaking into an actual, you know, tune song that everybody's singing together. But but those worship tapes where a whole bunch of people are just singing together in tongues. I mean, if, and there were these voices that were so high that no human voice can go that high. And you know, I was convinced at the time. Hey. We got visitors, yeah. angels. Angels are singing. I mean, it right? happened all, again and again and again, and it was beautiful. Mm. Wow! But you know, uh, Ty, remember back to being in that living room together. You say the terminology you use is "we believed everybody has to play," right? There doesn't need to be an intermediary between us and God. There was an intimacy in worship. When you think back on those early days, what most stands out to you? What do you remember most? What's the most poignant memory or reflection from those days? It was just uh, the, the sense of his presence with us. Tell me, tell me about that. The sense of his presence. Well, define that. We, we would be talking along or something, and maybe discussing something, and uh, then all of a sudden it was like, you know. And the, and the room was filled with tingling. Had you ever experienced that before? We always experienced that. Wow. I mean, that was, that was, that hey, was hey, he's here. You know, he's here. I mean, you've seen John, yeah. like, teaching along and teaching along, and he takes off his gla glasses right in the middle of something and said, well, the Holy Spirit's here. Mm. Let's see what he wants to do. Mm. And then, you know. And then he would do what he wants to do, and he picked what he wanted to do, and then we just did what we were supposed to do. You know, like, like it was, it was, um, it was like having Jesus as your pastor or the spirit of God as your pastor. He ran this show wow. and we never, never, never tried to like warm up the crowd before it starts, you know, like with a couple songs. We didn't do that. We felt that was almost sacrilegious because yeah. our worship belongs to him. It's not to warm up the crowd before an offering or something. Right. right. Um, let me ask you this. Um, when when you guys were gathered together and the Spirit of God, you, you, you talked about all of a sudden you... It didn't you have to be a good group. It could be 20 people. It could be 15 people. It could be four yeah. of us. Yes. You know. Yeah. And the Spirit of God would... All of a sudden you'd become aware the Spirit of God is here. Yeah. And where, where, did, that, where did that come? Did someone... Bring that was that happening because of John's talent? Because of John's it talent, it's, it's John had been baptized in the Holy Spirit, yeah, yeah, and then I was, you know, yeah, uh, seven years later, yeah. and then everybody we knew was right. We didn't think like it was a big deal. They went home, Jim Campbell, <laughs> uh, like Laura went home and prayed, and you know, the Holy Spirit came on her, and she's singing in the Spirit when Jim gets home. And Jim thinks, oh, guy, you know, Laura's ahead of me. Yeah. <laughs> he goes out in the chicken coop <laughs> knowing he's a sinner. <laughs> he gets in the chicken coop. <laughs> <laughs> Starts. <laughs> and he's, forgive me, God, forgive me. <laughs> and then he was baptized with the Holy Spirit. So he moved by. I love it. So but what I mean is, it was so it's so childlike and so like not uh, part of a plan. I mean, how how to get filled with the Holy Spirit? So it just happened. Yeah. 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 Um, 
So there uh, wasn't, what, what I love most. A lot of people went home and took a shower while they couldn't hear themselves. Then they start speaking in tongues and singing in tongues, and yeah. that was it. Yeah, <laughs> but I if they heard it. themselves, they'd stop. So they. <laughs> I love it. I mean, once they realized it, it was an all, all okay thing and, and it was helpful, very, very helpful. <laughs> yes. What I love most, Carol, about what you're describing is that there was no master plan. It's not no. like John and you woke no. up one day and said, let's start a church, let's start a movement. No. It seems like you guys were always responding to what That's the Spirit right. of God was doing in the moment and that you were even caught off guard by some of these things. Well, you John, were, you know, was actually trained at Fuller yeah. on church growth and and how, you know, the, the kind of churches that grow and that, what's the best size of a church, which happens to be like 300 or under. Uh, um, and so he had all this knowledge, uh, but I remember him saying, you know, I, ha I know all this stuff, but every time I make a plan, it doesn't happen the way it's supposed to happen. He said, I don't think, I don't think it's even, I'm even helping at all. I don't even feel like I pastor the church. Wow. <laughs> it's, a, it's God's church, you know, and I'm going to do what he says. <laughs> but I mean, he lost faith in church growth and all that and knowing things because he knew a lot about, about that, right. you know, all about churches and how they run. Yeah. But he finally like, okay, I, you know, I'm just going to do what he says, yeah. whatever. I love, I love that approach. The other thing, You've talked to me a lot about uh, before, and I've heard you speak with real passion about, is the importance from very early on of holding things very loosely and giving away to the poor or to those in need, whatever it was God was entrusting you. Where did that come from? Well, John, you know, John was going to have to travel, and uh, I hated to travel. And, but I knew we had something that he poured out on us that didn't belong to us. And John knew that, too. It belonged to the church. That's what Jesus had said. I want my church back. He yes. didn't just mean this part, American church. Mm -hmm. He meant his church. Yeah. And so that was part of it. So we had, you know, this outpouring of, of the Spirit, and we knew we had to go give it away. So it was on those grounds. And then we took a bunch of teenagers with it just to have some people to help. And it was good for them, you know, to understand. And they learned a lot on those trips. And But, all, you know, they were just teenagers. Some of them good, some of them are bad, you know. Right. Some, right. <laughs> but they all, they all had become Christians. So, uh, but it was funny when someone, Peter Wagner, uh, um, described them as John and his trained healers. <laughs> These are a bunch of John kids. John and his trained yeah, healers? Yeah, John Wimber and his trained healers. Wow. Well, it's just a bunch of teenage kids, <laughs> Yeah, they're right? just a bunch of kids, I yeah. I love it. I love it. Everybody gets to play. <laughs> but when we went in the name of Jesus, we would spend a lot of time behind the stage, all of us, just singing in the spirit and, and calling out to God, you know, don't send us out there unless you're out there first. You know, don't, you know, we don't have anything to give them until you give it, until you're there and you can give it to them. So, you know. We're here, you know, we're here because you sent us here. And, and so empower us now, empower. Yeah. So by the time we came out on the stage and started, you know, he, the Lord was all over the place. Yeah. You know, it was just a breakout, people falling all over the place. Yeah. But but the preliminary was, you know, we don't we don't have anything except you. And yeah. if you're not, you know, if, if you're not doing this, then get us out of here. We want to. <laughs> yeah. And, uh Anybody, but, but because we were there and we tell them because we were not educated and that kind of offended a lot of the prof professionals in the Anglican church and so on. Uh, like, obviously, we were, we were not professionals. Right. And uh, but and, and one one bishop wrote me a letter afterwards because John had mentioned Darbyism or something. And and he said, uh about Bob Lowney and, you know, like a big, he was a professor. And he was saying, you know, like, well, but we shouldn't do this. And I wrote, I wrote, turned the, used the same letter, turned it around on the back, and I said, give us a break. <laughs> I said, we're just a bunch of a American, we're just a bunch of ignorant American. The only reason we came to your church was give you something that God told us you wanted, that belonged to you. Now, we, we did that. 
Yeah. That's it. Yes. Don't complain. Wow. I love it. <laughs> and then anyhow, yeah, that guy that came to love us and everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure. I love it. <laughs> Bishop still on so. But 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 that was it. We were we were on a mission, but the mission was to give what he's given us that didn't just belong to us. Yeah. It belonged to our brothers and sisters in other lands and it didn't matter what denomination. Yes. You know. Absolutely. And and so consequently, it's weird. I mean, they have a whole a whole set of Anglican churches that are vineyard Anglican yeah, <laughs> kind of thing, it. you know. Uh, but but also, John, interestingly enough, he did not think of a denomination that believes the same. We we had different denominations that were part. We were, John said a set a, a center set or a open set or something. Yeah. I don't know what. Yeah. Like. Uh, the center set is they've got their their deal in the middle, how they all believe, and you're right. in there. Right. Uh, uh, and it has a wall. You have to stump, step over to get into that where the red dot is, which right. is you know what God wants. I mean, what what they believe God wants. And then there's the open set that uh, it it's just all these different kind of churches, all all going towards the same spot which yeah. is god yeah. they're, and they're doing it different ways yeah. anglican catholic and and uh but 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 that's it they we that was the holy spirit was for them yeah yeah and and then i we got the distinct impression from god that he loves those guys yeah and he doesn't matter whether they're you know they're you know they're hippies or they're high church yeah he kind of likes it all yeah yeah, kind of like the stuff. aroma, like a stew. I love that. Yeah. Wow. So that was his approach to the church. He was, he never, I mean, he never believed anything denominational and so on. Yeah. So he wouldn't, He if he thought of Vineyard as a denomination, he would have been out of here a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> so on, on that note, um, in your words, just from your perspective, what does it mean to be Vineyard? Well, what it meant to us, I wouldn't call it vineyard. What does it mean to us to be a Christian? Yeah. I don't care what the name is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I still don't care what the name right. is. Right. I'm grateful to Ken Gullickson for loaning us his name. Yeah. Because, you know. Ken the, Gullickson uh, started the first vineyard church. Oh, yeah. Years yeah. before. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Then he kind of gave over part of the, you know, managing of it to John. Yes. But, but he said, you know, use my name. God yeah. gave it to me. And John said I'll use it, Ken, yeah. but I'm not giving it back. You know, I've right. already been kicked out of the Quaker Church. I've already been kicked out of Calvary Chapel. Yes. <laughs> so do this at your own. I love so, it. Yeah. I love it. But, uh, but here we are today, and we're, yeah. we're, we're, we're vineyard churches. You call it being Christian, which I love. I love the humility. I love well, the that, directness I mean, God did not really give us a name. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And, and I think if it was a name, it was probably Gunner. Yeah. He said, there's a, there isn't any place higher than yeah. being a Christian. Yeah. There's nothing more. Yes. I mean, nothing higher and nothing better. Yes. And and he taught, you know, he taught us, you know, he lived his life out for God and yes. God blessed him. And he, you know, really everybody knows about Gunner now. And, so, and he he'd won half the town to the Lord. Yeah. Amazing. It, it was a small town. Yes. But when his daughter died, you know. Yes. Um, yeah. So for you, so for, uh, so, what does it mean? What does it mean to be a Christian? Yeah. To you? Well, it means that it means I can do all things um, that he wants me to do if he if he's lives in me yeah. and or if he tells me to do something or say something, I better I better obey and I better obey fast or yeah. else I'll lose my nerve. Yeah. So and, and if God gives me a word of knowledge, I better act on it fast, yeah. you know, because it's God giving me word of knowledge. And then I expect uh, the person, if it's a healing thing, to be healed. Yeah. If, if I see a hungry person, I know if I've got anything on me, I better do something about it. Yes. Or a na you know, naked, or I better do something about it. Yeah. And uh, right away, you know, as needed. And, uh, um, and uh, there are times when it uh, wasn't a fast raising from the dead, but it was my brother Tim. 
couple of times. <laughs> He's wow. been dead, and wow. then he wasn't dead. Wow. <laughs> then he wasn't it's dead. like we 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 kind of understand now. Like, oh, don't worry if he's dead. He's, you know, he'll yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he'll wake up. You know. <laughs> You're talking about a very active faith. What seems to oh, be yeah. important to you, Carol, is that if God is on something, we just do. We, we do. We it. go. We I'll do tell it. you what's anxious. What I what what my goal is. I want the little ones. Yeah. I want them to, you know, I, I want to put what's in me. Yes. I want God to put that in them. Yeah. So I just want to get a hold of them all before yeah. I die. Yes. And um, and I, I believe, you know, like that spirit I placed on you and the words I placed in your mouth shall yes. be in the mouth of your children and their children and their children. I love it. So for those of us gathered here this week, uh, hearing you now and really camping out on this idea of at this crossroads at this leg of the journey where do we go from here what do you most want us to remember as vineyard leaders as vineyard pastors what do you most hope we grab onto and run into the future with what do you most want us to do i most want you shepherds that have been put in charge of a certain flock, I want you to explain to those baby Christians and all those Christians who they are. They don't belong to you and your denomination. They belong to him. And there is no place higher than being a Christian. No place more important. It's inhabited by the Holy Spirit. And inhabited by the Holy Spirit, you obey what he says in your head or in your heart. Fast. Uh, well, act on it. Yeah. And if you're in a place where they don't allow acting on it, then go to a different place where they allow acting on it. Mm. Or, you know, go on the streets. The meat's in the street, remember? Yes. yes. <laughs> so that phrase, the meat's in the street, what does that, that mean John, to you? That, well, that, what it meant to John was that's where the action is. It's not in these walls. We get, we get in here, we get in here and we all celebrate together. We're celebrating what God has done, but then we take it out in the streets. I mean, I remember when it was happening so much around here that a couple of guys, uh, uh, they had been Calvary Chapel guys, like were praying for somebody in a parking lot. And, and, uh, and uh, the guy they were praying for just went out. And went out like, just like out, under like, the power out, of the Spirit yeah, kind yeah. of thing? Yeah, under, solely under the power. And somebody said, are you guys gypsies? <laughs> Are you guys gypsies? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, everywhere they went, yeah. uh, they carried that presence with them and always looking for an opportunity yeah. for God to, to tell them what to do. And so you have like, a, you know, thousands of people doing that. It makes a big, you know, big noise. Yeah. But nobody was like, oh, well, you have to go. You have to go check that with your leader. We didn't have a leader. He was our leader. Yeah. Everybody was. Yeah. yeah. So the New Testament, Peter calls that the priesthood of all believers. That's right? right. And so for you at the very center of what it means to be vineyard, at the very center of what it means to be a Christian in your words, a follower of Jesus uh -huh is that I know the Spirit of God is going to speak to me directly, and the imperative on me is to respond, is to react immediately. I hear That's urgency right. in your voice. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, because, see, and that, that my problem is, I'm, all, I'm basically very shy. I don't like to come up to strangers and say, hey, I, I know that you're, I know that this is going on, let me pray for you. Uh, I mean, that's hard for me. Uh, so I often miss that little opening of faith because it does, you know, it opens up, but it, it closes. It so you got to, you cannot ponder, was that really God? Did he really say that? Well, wait a minute, what if it, what if it isn't true? You know, if you do that, you're going to miss it. That, that opening closes up. Yeah. Uh, I remember being on the uh, steamer going over to Catalina with Penny a couple of years ago, Penny Fulton. And I, I said to her, I, I noticed some woman that came in and went to a, a, a younger man, that which might have been her son. But the, the woman, I knew that something was wrong with the woman. And uh, I, I can't remember where it was. Um, I can't remember what it was. I said, I think that. But I said to Penny, I think that woman's just lost someone she really loved. 
Hmm. And she and uh, she said, who, where? And I said, that lady back there behind that young man. And uh, she said, well, are you going to go back there? I said, oh, I don't want to go back. I'm not sure. And she says, Penny goes back there and prays for that woman. It was exactly the situation. She just lost somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Penny, Penny, you know, is good. She, she'll hop down. right on, yeah, you know, yeah. where I tend to be too self-conscious or not wanting to insult somebody, you know. So I have to. So I'm learning still now when God is saying something, well, like uh, Sunday, I popped up and grabbed the microphone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and I had a word. I didn't even know what it was going to be. In your church, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, but I was kind of like weak because of the Holy Spirit. So I, I could have fallen over and caused a big <laughs> caused a big hassle. You know, old Carol has fallen. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> but anyhow, um, it was the Lord, mm. and I didn't even know what I was going to say until it was said. And I don't really remember, remember what it was I said either, but that, that was the Lord. And the, but I had, you know, the one thing I was thinking of now, 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 yeah. don't, don't hesitate because I knew it would be gone. Urgency. Yeah. If there is a distinguishing characteristic of what it means to be vineyard, could you narrow that down for me? Could you name that? There's Calvary chapels. There's well, friends. It, What's the distinguishing characteristic in your mind of the vineyard? I think it's um, that uh, there isn't any one person. It, it, you're not under anybody yeah. except the Holy Spirit. Everybody, Everybody yeah. gets a plate, even if you're brand new. And, you know, maybe your first instance of being a Christian is you wander into someplace and somebody asks you to pray for him. So you pray for him and that guy gets healed. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. A lot yes. of people become Christians that way. Yeah. Just because God will use them right away, and how you know, I mean, they, then they don't have to go study as a healing for today. You know, God's already used them to heal somebody, yeah. so it just answers a whole lot of questions. Suddenly, of course, they're a believer. You know, yeah, let God do the do what He does in His own children, yeah. and we belong to Him. We're just we're like cells in the body, the body of Christ, yeah. and there isn't anyone that can work without the other. You know, but. But the, 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 everything doesn't run from the head, except that the head is, is the Lord himself. Yeah. And all this getting in between, it seems to me, just slows things up. If you have to go to a class to get ready to pray for people or be taught how to, you know, then, then forget it. Hmm. Go get a day job. <laughs> go get a day job. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, I'm going to ask you one more question. All You've right. done so good, Carol. Well, what you I, have. What I so see yeah. and the, that hurts me is I see all these people. I knew, I knew a lot of them when they were teenagers and they're not real involved anymore because somebody's, you know, somebody's disciplined them or they forgot, they have forgotten that they are the, the one that tells us, the one that tells us what to do is not a pastor or a teacher or the head of something. The one that tells us what to do is God himself. God himself. And we got to do it when he says it. We don't, we don't, or, or it's just an opening. We got to jump with it. And then, and then all heaven breaks loose. Yeah. So I that's what that. I see. And I don't care what the name of the church is or what kind of a Christian you are or what is your particular, I'm talking about God himself. Yes. yes. And, and you as a person, one of his part of the body. Yeah. So I don't care if it's a vineyard or Calvary Chapel or Friends Church or Baptist, or, you know. And, and God, you know, God has proven his, po po uh, his point. He poured the Holy Spirit out on all those Catholics, all those priests. You know, they were laid out. And we a lot of those priests were traveling with us when John and I were. And it was great yeah. having the Catholics there, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it was beautiful. Yeah. And they have a certain humility that. Some Protestants don't have. Yeah, I think just always being under somebody, it's you know the cause of humility. Yeah. But uh, but it's like different tastes, the different denominations. But no, but no one is more important than the other. Yeah. But if we all know the directions of, of what we're to do, come from God. What we're to be come yeah. from God. They don't come from laying on of hands of some. Leader somewhere, some special, yeah, no, person. yeah, it's not especially, yeah. yeah, it's him, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, Jesus. Can, 
Can I say to you, Carol, thank you. Just thank you for your faithfulness. And, you know, I was a 21 year old man when I moved to Vineyard Anaheim and it changed my life. And I was one of those thousands of people that walked into a room and discovered I was vineyard before I even knew it. Yeah. Right. I walked in and all of a sudden it just felt like family. It felt like home. And can I just say thank you for your faithfulness and your willingness to serve and love the body of Christ and to, in your words, be a Christian, not yeah. be vineyard, right? Be a Christian. Uh, he certainly, thank you. But I, I've always thought of it like different tribes. Yeah. And, you, and you have a feeling in your heart which tribe you belong to. And so I think of what we call vineyard, like a tribe. And it's, a, it's, a, it's got its own distinctions, and there's, there's, but there's lots of tribes. Yes. And they're all beautiful in their own way. Yes. Or like a stew, John was always saying, that's like the, all the different flavors, it makes a wonderful stew. Yes. So I don't look down on any, any denomination or any group. I just want us all to work out what it is God has called us to do yes. by letting God do it. And obeying him right away when he does. Don't obeying don't let right that away. time pass. I love I love the urgency. Um, Carol, we love you and we're grateful for you. Thank, Thank you. you for being you.